Welcome to The Advocates, I'm Aaron Dean. In Baltimore, one organization is giving artistic power back to the people. And through art, they are making a real impact on their community. It's called Jubilee Arts, and it's located on Pennsylvania Avenue, an area in the city with a rich history of African-American culture. They provide all kinds of lessons and classes. Some of those include painting, drawing, dancing, and even sewing, just to name a few. The organization is also engaging the community and youth with its programs that cater to topics like business and leadership. And the people behind this beautiful organization are just as passionate about advocating for their community as they are with their art. Jennifer Frazier and Miss Black know the power art can have on a community, but they know that their work isn't finished yet. The two join me for a look inside this Baltimore, Maryland institution. Um, how did Jubilee Arts come to be? Kind of give us a little background. Well, let's see, Jubilee Arts is one of three visions of our founder, Elder Harris. Um, we have three founders. Um, Elder Harris is our founder and two additional founders, um, our ED, Todd Marcus, and um, Elder Harris's wife, Miss Amelia Harris. They saw disparity in the community of West Baltimore and wanted to do something about it. If you ever meet our founder, you're going to figure out, like, He's truly a visionary, truly excited, and truly when he feels something, he's going to make that thing happen. Okay, that's what I love about him. So he started this um, He started this place for women to recover. Um, if you've, you know, fallen short, you know, fallen off a path, he wanted to have a space for, you know, women to be able to rebuild. Mm -hmm. Hence, we have this um, program called Martha's Place. Then next came along Jubilee Arts, which is all art, creative, community arts programming, everything from ballet to ceramics to line dance to drawing. I mean, everything. Elder Harris is a dancer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's his passion. He loves art. So he wanted to incorporate that in that pillar as well. And then that third tier was strength to love too far, you know, to bring us some food sovereignty to our neighborhoods. A lot of times they call our neighborhoods food deserts. Mm -hmm. So we want to combat that narrative um, with that farm. Now, Jubilee Arts, it started because, you know, there are arts are the first bit of programming that are cut in schools. Um, you know, you no longer have like things like home ec, sewing, um, those core things that I really enjoyed, those resources that I really enjoyed as a kid, you know, leaving school or leaving class, leaving math or reading, whatever, and going to do something that was actually like fulfilling what I actually enjoyed. And I think Jubilee Arts is one of those pillars right now that's keeping things like sewing still in our community for an affordable rate. Um, $3 for children, $6 for an adult, and scholarships if you can. Um, you know, dance, keeping our community active, ceramics. We are that space that for the artist who hasn't given up on their craft or who still loves their craft, we're that space that's still, you know, you're, you're, you matter, your art matters, your voice matters, your impact matters, your feel matters. The thing that you want to do is still necessary and we want to hold a space for you to be able to do it. Um, so we've been around for, uh, you know, a little over 25 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you know, you know, this program is located, like you said, in Baltimore on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is in the area that ha that is rich of African-American history and culture. Um, either Black Jen or Ms. Black can, can answer this one. Kind of describe that culture and that landscape for our audience. We can get a better picture of who you're serving. Yeah, um, we are a predominantly Black area. This is the heart of the Black Arts District and we always make sure that we tell our students, our community members, anyone who engages with the space that you know we really want to connect with our roots and that that history is so integral and important to us and to who we are. Um, the Black Arts District currently um, has different uh, events. Um, they have like a whole arts organization that's about promoting that history and like trying to keep that going, um, injecting the space with some positivity and like reconnecting us with that past. So um, we're a huge part of that. They're one of our community partners. Uh, a lot of our classes and themes that we have throughout the year are focused towards that. And we really just want to kind of bring apart that that uh, that spirit that we feel like maybe we've been getting away from uh, back into our space. Yeah. And you know, one thing I'm, I'm really picking up from talking to you guys, you know, you all, bo both of you are very excited about the work that you do at this organization. And that 
re- resonates so true, especially when we're talking about the arts. You got to really love it because, you know, you're teaching someone else about it. And like you both said, you know, you offer programming in dance, visual arts, entrepreneurship, ceramics, so many other spaces. You know, how can having a community arts program benefit the different neighbors that you serve, but also how has it helped the community as a whole? I definitely love that question. Um, we talked about this maybe what for the past couple of weeks about how our impact spills over into the community, who it actually impacts um, the community at large. I, I would say the works at Jubilee Art, we impact through ripples tons of people. I think we extend beyond Baltimore City. Our primary population, our focal area, our focus area is at two one two one seven. You know, West Baltimore. Um, our mission is to beautify West Baltimore. I want people to feel like we can have qualitative art content. We can have a beautiful environment. Our neighborhoods can be safe, can be beautiful, can feel, you know, empowering right where we are. We don't have to leave to go to certain neighborhoods where stereotypically they may be viewed as creative communities or art communities. We're the Black Arts District, you know, like there's so much history here. I want to constantly remind people that through our works. So I think, you know, intentionally on paper, you know, our population that we aim to serve is that West Baltimore population, Sandtown, Winchester, you know, 21217. Our goal is to provide resources directly to this area, to our neighborhood. And by doing that, we've created rippling effects of just like, I don't know, positive energy. Uh, just... I don't know, we're doing a good work and it ripples throughout all of Maryland. You know, when COVID, you know, hit us, we were able to teach people from California, Washington State, um, Florida. People were impacted directly by our arts classes. You know, this thing we do every day, you know, we just go and we draw, we do what we do. You know, all of our teaching artists are just phenomenal artists that gift their works to the community in this way. And then we found that that impact was needed all over. Mm -hmm. And so I I can never say that we are just local with our impact. I think that it's limitless. I feel like we have plenty to go, you know. Well, you know, to that point, you know, you talked about how art, your art program has had an impact, not just in the city of which you're in, but it has spread beyond that, which speaks to the testament of the power of art. It, art is not just some thing that happens in this little globe right here. It impacts us all, which leads to this next point. You know, all over the country, we have seen school districts reduce or even sometimes cut arts programs. Can you Absolutely. speak to the importance of arts at all stages of life, not just young people, but we're talking about adults and even, you know, more of our, I don't want to say elder, more seasoned, you know, mm-hmm. brothers and sisters. You know, Jen, can you talk to that? Sure. Um, I think that, well, especially for, you know, teaching adults, um, what I've experienced from that is that sometimes I think adults tend to get away from that youthful energy that they once had as kids. And it's so important as far as your development. It's so far, it's so important as far as your mental health, um, being able to have that space in your life to just be free and do whatever you want and express yourself um, without having to adhere to like a rigid structure of rules, you know? So um, it's so important as far as like when you're really little, just like learning how to, you know, your, you develop your fine motor skills, develop, you know, your imagination and then continuing that through every stage of your life, right? To your, you know, your golden season years. It, it's super important. And oftentimes we find, you know, people of all ages coming to our center and thanking us because, you know, we're giving them that outlet that they need to have consistent classes um, that's accessible, affordable, and offering them really creative and um, high quality uh, experiences as well from professional artists all over the city. So, yeah. And, you know, as we wrap this conversation up, I really want to know from, you know, either, um, either one of you's perspective, what can other communities, you know, learn from your program and model as, you know, as the as world as the world continues to turn, you know, what can they pick up from how you all operate into implementing this into where they are? I think for me, the most powerful movement that we have here at Jubilee Arts is our accessibility. Mm-hmm. Um, we make it possible for 
people to continue this. Um, therapy is very expensive. Um, Self care is expensive. Mm -hmm. We literally come into the community. We're in the community, and we are an outlet for healing. I know we don't advocate for that. We don't put that on our paperwork. But I know what art did for me. Thanks so much for watching The Advocates. Download the app in the Apple or Google Play Store to stream us live. And you can even subscribe to our YouTube channel. For The Advocate Channel, I'm Aaron Dean.